Welcome. In this short video, I will be describing the basic concept that underlies floating point numbers. Uh, in a successive video, I will describe floating point numbers in the standard format, which is the IEEE format. So, the important thing to remember about floating point numbers is we we recall that in the decimal number system, which is a positional number system, we represent floating point numbers using a decimal point to separate the integral part from the fractional part. So we use an integral part, a period, which is a decimal point, followed by the fractional part. For example, I could have a number like 215.325, which represents the number uh, in floating point because it has both a integral part and a fractional part. Uh, just to just to rem recall, um, confirm that this is indeed a positional format, positional number system. What we realize is positional number system. What we realize is we can express this as 2 times 10 to the 2 plus 1 times 10 to the 1 plus 5 times 10 to the 0 plus the, the parts after the decimal fraction have values 1 tenth, 1 hundredth and 1 thousandth. So we write this as 3 times 10 to the minus 1 plus that's tenths and 2 times 10 to the minus 2 plus 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Well, we can extend this concept, this idea of decimal numbers. So this is in decimal numbers with a fractional part and an integral part to binary numbers as well. So the equivalent in binary would look like this. For, here's an, an example. I have a number like 101 with 1101 after the, after the decimal point. So we have our integral part which is 101 and the fractional part which is this part right here. So, what does it represent as a number? We know that 215.325 represents this because it's a positional system. As we will see, the extension makes this also a positional number system. And accordingly, our value that this number represents is 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 0 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 0, which is what we've already done for the integral part, which we know how to do. And the fractional part now, each of these has a place value, like in the decimal number system, this becomes a 1 times 2 to the minus 1, which is this has a place value of half, and the next number has a place value of a quarter, and the next number has a place value of, next digit has a place value of 1 8, and the next one has a place value of 1 16th. So this number, when we write it down, represents the number 5, which is the integral part, plus a 0.25 actually a 0.25 which is this one plus a 0.5 which is this one plus a point zero six two five, which is 1 by 16th which comes out to be a value which is 5.8125 in other words to summarize 1 1 or 101.1101 in binary represents 5.8125 in in base 10 now 
the question one one might ask himself is well if i can if i know how to convert from base 2 to base 10 when i have not just an integral part but a fractional part as well then how about the transformation which is a reverse transformation that is given a number when in decimal can i find out what the number represents in binary so let's do the do this transformation and we realize that the transformation is uh, follows the guidelines that we've already described so for example 5 is the way we find out what 5 so let's say I was trying to convert do this reverse conversion from here to here the integral part 5 we know that the way I find out what it represents is I successively divide by 2 so 2 goes 2 times with a remainder of 1 2 goes 0 times uh, sorry 1 time with a remainder of 0 2 goes 0 times with a remainder of 1 so the number that 5 represents is 101 but what about the fractional part so this is the integral part which we know already how to do the fractional part which is 0 0.8125 the operation here remember is successive multiplication the operation we perform here is successive I'm sorry the operation here is a successive division so the operation here will be the exact opposite which is a successive multiplication in other words I'm gonna take this number multiply it by 2 which gives me a 1.625 I multiply that again by 2 but I ignore the the one that I got out of this multiplication I repeat this process I multiply it by 2 and I get a 1.25 I multiply it again by 2 I get a 0 0.5 which I multiply again by 2 and I get the value 1.0 and then I write the number down like this that's from top to bottom so in other words this number 0.8125 represents 1101 and so I can say that this number is 101 with a 1101 which is exactly what we have here so this is the basic idea behind a uh, floating point numbers or numbers with the integral part and a fractional part uh, there's one other thing that we do which is uh, just as a convenience so uh, everybody can be on the same page which is what we call as normalization the basic idea behind normalization is uh, it can be best understood by taking a simple example for example uh, the very popular constant which is the Avogadro's Avogadro constant um, is 6.023 times 10 to the 23 well one one might ask that oneself well why should I write it in this form why not maybe here is an alternate form which is exactly the same which is 6023 times 10 to the 20 because all I'm doing is taking away this fractional part and I'm sticking it to, as an integral part so I end up having to take away a few of the uh, off of the power so this would be exactly the same but this is established way of doing it because the rule often for convenience is that we always try to write our number so that there is only one digit to the left of the to the left of the decimal point so so that's the reason why this is an accepted format so by that token if I were to write this binary number in its in its standard uh, 
normalized form, it would be written as a 1.01101 1 .01 1 1 1. and the fact that I've shifted it to the right by two point two places, like unlike here the decimal point where it was shifted right. So what I would end up doing is I would write it as 2 to the power of 2. So, so the essential idea then is that I, by shifting I can write it in a form that looks like the so-called scientific notation for for floating point numbers. So again, to recap, the idea of normalization is to make sure and write it so that there is only one digit to the left of our, our decimal point and the one digit in our case is going to be because in the case of uh, binary numbers, only valid digits are 0 and 1, we have to have it as 1. In the case of decimal numbers, we don't usually have a 0 in front, we will try to make it a number that is um, a digit that's other than 0, anything from 1 to 9. Okay. So, uh, in the next video, we'll look at how the standard works.